Welcome to the Swim Swam podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining us today, he's an Olympian. Uh, he's an ISL champion. And most recently, he is a six time world championship medalist. He won six medals. I think that's tied for the most medals, at least on the men's side, it was. And uh, at these world championships in Abu Dhabi today, we get to sit down with Nick Fink. What's up, man? How's it going? Thanks for having me. I'm excited to sit down and talk with you. You've had, I, I feel like you're probably in contention for one of the busiest fall seasons or post Olympic <laughs> seasons, uh, in swimming right now, you've, you've gone through a lot and we're going to try to dissect all of it. Um, let's start with that world championship meet and, and just kind of work our way. Sorry, I'm going to scratch that. Let's start with, um, the Olympics. All right. Okay. You go to trials. <laughs> And then we'll just go forward. You go to trials. Um, it was your third trials. I think in a, in an interview before that you had kind of said, you know, your first trials, you were this up and comer, the second trials, you really wanted to make that team. There's a lot of pressure and this one you can, you could kind of approach is, you know, I'm, I'm going to let it come to me and whatever happens happens. Did you, did you, were you able to feel that at this third Olympic trials? Yeah, definitely. Um, it was, yeah, something that I've definitely learned throughout my experience of, of being in Olympic trials. Um, yeah, like I said, the first one was um, kind of more relaxed. I was just kind of a nobody uh, who went and just enjoyed the trip. And second time, I guess I put all this pressure on myself and, um, you know, all these expectations. And, and I think uh, I think I just ended up, you know, having a bad meet and, and not meeting any of my goals and all that stuff. And, you know, it was pretty, pretty devastating. And I was, um, you know, I was coming into this meet trying to, trying to, you know, find myself more of, of the mindset of the first trials where, you know, not that, you know, I didn't have any shot to make it, but, you know, I was kind of going for the experience and, and, you know, knowing that it, it could be my last trials, it could be my last time, you know, swimming, who knows, um, but just kind of enjoying it and, um, you know, willing to see what happens. And I, I knew I had a good year. I knew I set myself up, set myself up well for, for trials and, um, yeah, I think, uh, I think I ended up trying to be as, as calm and, and collected as possible and, and relaxed. And I think, uh, you know, especially by, by the fourth, fifth day of racing, I, I was feeling that. So <laughs> it was good. Yeah. That, and so to make your first Olympic team, um, I feel like you were in a unique situation <laughs> where, um, you have a partner who had been on an Olympic team prior, um, and I, I'm curious as to how you leaned on her knowledge of that, just from the, from trials to the Olympic games. Um, if, if you guys discussed that at all, or, or if you didn't ask her any questions at all, um, I'm, I'm talking about Melanie Margalis, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. For those who don't know, I've, I've been dating Melanie Margalis for quite a while, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's like nothing really too, too concrete. Um, you know, we, you know, know how each other feel on, on a daily basis and stuff like that. Um, you know, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? Stuff like that, but nothing, you know, I didn't like sit down and interview her about you know, all that stuff. It was uh, kind of, you know, you're kind of able to, you know, dissect each other's mindsets just from, you know, being around each other so much. And I'm, you know, strictly talking about, you know, from a swimming point of view is like you, you understand how, how she thinks and how she works throughout, throughout, um, you know, meets and, and big, big moments and stuff like that. And I think, um, I don't know if I've, you know, helped her at all, but I know she's definitely, you know, helped me with all her experience and, and not everything, you know, she says, and, you know, she, she's been telling me forever that I just need to go out there and relax. And, and um, so, you know, I finally think was able to get around to doing that the past, past few years. And, um, you know, it's really shown in, uh, in, in the results. So, um, it was definitely a bummer to, uh, make, you know, con not different years of the games, you know, that would have been very cool to g have gone together. Um, but now it's just something that we've, you know, both been able to accomplish and, and, um, you know, she was, 
really, really, really close the second time. And, and, but she couldn't have been happier for, for Emma and Haley and, and all the other IMers who made it. So, um, you know, she was, she was our biggest fans back home and, and I was happy to share, share the experience with her that way. Yeah. And, and just talking a little bit about that experience, um, Obviously, you know, it was something that had been on your mind just going to an Olympics for quite some time. Um, did it live up to the expectations? Did it exceed the expectations? You know, what was kind of the what you expected versus the reality of of going to Tokyo? Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was really cool in a lot of ways. Um, and in some ways I had to temper expectations just because I knew it was going to be a weird games. I knew it was going to be you know, a COVID year and, and, um, like one, one moment I, I pick out in particular was, uh, me and Andrew Wilson were standing by waiting for a picture with the rings. You know, there was this big, huge, um, statue, I guess, of, of rings that everyone was getting their picture taken. And when we were there, we were standing next to two, um, Australian rowers and, um, we just like, we're talking about, you know, their sports and they were talking about our sport and we just kind of were going back and forth. And I was like, this is really cool. Like this is, this is what, you know, the Olympic games is really all about. And it's just so unfortunate that I was scared of other people at that meet, you know, is that I, you know, we were outside, you know, distanced and everything, but um, you know, I, I couldn't like sit down with other athletes in the dining hall or, I mean, I guess I could have, you know, but I was trying to avoid that as much as possible. And I think, um, you know, especially, you know, Team USA is, is, um, they, they weren't super strict on everything, but they said, Hey, you know, we want you to swim, you know, we want you to compete. You know, the worst thing to do is be to get there and then not be able to compete. So, um, everyone was taking care of themselves and, and in that way it was, it was definitely a little weird. And, and, you know, even within, you know, rooms, you didn't want to try to, cross contaminate too much. You know, if, even if I wanted to go say hi to, you know, chase and congratulate him on his swims, you know, I had to, um, you know, do that where, uh, you know, cautiously. So, um, it was, you know, things like that, that kind of made the experience different than, than what I had heard and what I had expected. Um, but you know, as, as opposed to, you know, or, you know, when it comes to racing and, you know, being in a meet and the whole experience of, traveling with team USA and, and going to the training camp and, you know, going to, um, you know, the village and, and getting all the Olympic gear and stuff that, that part lived up to the hype. And, and, you know, I was super happy with how, you know, all that stuff, you know, felt and how it, how it, you know, um, how I remember it. So, um, yeah, no complaints, no complaints about, about the games for sure. And yeah, it was definitely a weird year, but, um, but it was, it was still a very, very cool experience. Yeah. It, it, I feel like you summed it up pretty well <laughs> for, for everyone, right? Just very cool, but also very different, very other, um, you know, for, for in our sport, the going to the Olympics is kind of like the pinnacle, right? The top of our sport. I think for most athletes who go to the Olympics, that's kind of the it, right? Did, did, did it feel like that for you or did it feel like, Hey, I accomplished this thing and now I can move forward. Or did it kind of jumpstart you of, Hey, I accomplished this thing and now I want to keep going. Um, what, what did just at coming off of the Olympics, how did it feel? What kind of accomplishment did it feel like for you? Um, I mean, that's, that's one of the things that I, I kind of, tried rewiring my brain before, um, trials this time is, is, you know, four years, five years ago, you know, I kind of had that mindset of this is it, you know, this is all or nothing, you know, you don't have a successful career unless you make the Olympics, you don't do this, you know, and all that stuff. And you know, that's just ridiculous is to, to put that kind of standard on, on everything you do. I mean, obviously, you know, if your goal is to make the Olympics, you have a shot of making it, you want to do it. And, and, you know, it is considered the, pinnacle of the sport by, by most, but, you know, it's just, I, I tried to rewire my brain such that, you know, I was, I was very happy that I was able to bounce back in, um, 2017 and make the world's team. And then in 2019, you know, do well at Pan Ams and, and go best time there. And, and I think, you know, I had grown to appreciate what I have done and, and all the experiences that I have had. And, you know, 
obviously I want to make it, but um, you know, to put all of the all or nothing pressure on on that meet is just I mean, it's just ridiculous. So um I definitely, you know, I definitely wanted to um I guess, you know, make the team, but but once I had made it, I guess I was, you know, obviously super stoked, super happy, but um, you know, relieved in a lot of sense. Um, but it wasn't like, you know, um, you know, I, I see that's more of like icing on the cake. That's my career as opposed to, you know, no dessert at all, which is, you know, I guess a weird analogy to, to make, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, I think, you know, having the experience in the past definitely helped me perform at the games. Um, even though, you know, I still, you know, it still is, is, is an experience and, and a feeling that I haven't felt before. So it was definitely new in some ways, but very familiar in other ways. And um, I think, you know, coming back from that gave me a lot of confidence to, you know, keep swimming fast and, and keep racing, which, you know, if you've raced in front of millions of people at the Olympics, then it makes, uh, you know, other, other meets a lot easier too. Yeah. I, I feel like that's a great way to put it. And a great mindset to have. I, I love that a lot more athletes are starting to branch out and just be a little more vocal about the Olympics, not defining their career or being that pinnacle because it, you know, it, it, it does seem like <clears throat> that can be a really harsh bar to live by. Yeah, uh, no, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so then, yeah, coming off of the Olympics, your world, I'm guessing didn't stop very much at all. Uh, you moved to Atlanta. Can you take me through the timeline of moving to Atlanta, starting school at Georgia tech and going to the ISL? Yeah. So, um, after, after the games, or I guess during, during the training camp, um, Mel actually moved our stuff to Atlanta. So I had, I had to pack all my stuff before, or I guess what, in between trials and, um, leaving for training camp and she moved all of our, all of our stuff here. So after the games, I got back to a new apartment and I had to like unpack all the Olympic year that we get and all the stuff that I had before in like a new city <laughs> and all that stuff. And not only that, but I was preparing for a semester in grad school in which I hadn't taken a class in five years. Um, and then I was also trying to figure out if ISL was even a possibility for me to do um, because, I mean, Jason was great in, in letting me stay on the Cali Condors with even, you know, with the uncertainty that I would go to go to the first week of class and all the professors like, no, you can't spend, you know, four weeks in Naples and four weeks in Eindhoven. What are you, what are you thinking? So, um, you know, he was super supportive of that. And, you know, I think I had, you know, maybe two weeks, maybe a little less, um, to kind of get everything together and, and figure out, you know, my, my life in a sense, uh, figure everything out. But, um, but I did kind of just fall right back into it. And, and, um, you know, I guess, uh, I was in class for a week and one day um, trying to get class schedule figured out and everything. And then after that, I was off to Naples where I think I missed the first ISL meet. But after that, um, the schedule actually worked out really well that I was able to, to go to all the other meets and, and you know, in Naples and in, in Eindhoven. So. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's actually funny because a lot of the professors are like, yeah, like, of course, if you, you know, you know, we're dealing with COVID stuff anyway. So all these, I, I strategically picked classes that were also offered online. So, you know, they're like, oh yeah, I just record the lectures and upload them and you can totally watch them. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's great. So um, they're like, you just can't miss tests. You have to be here for tests. And I'm like, okay, like this might be, you know, problematic. Um, but all the tests ended up falling in between Naples and Eindhoven and then Eindhoven happened. And then the week after I flew home for finals week, which I had a few tests, but I was actually home for seven days um, doing a couple presentations, a project or two, and then three final exams. 
seven days before I flew out to Abu Dhabi. So um, it was, well, <laughs> would I do it again? I, I don't know, but it was, I was really happy to be done with, with all of that um, just because that was a hectic, hectic semester. So um, yeah, it, it got, it got pretty crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I, I spoke too soon. That is insane. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. So let's let's break this down a little bit. Um, so for ISL, I was going to ask, you know, did did the COVID situation kind of help with that because you could do online classes and you answered mm-hmm. that. Um, so then, in terms of um, like training and competition, were you pretty? were you pretty good to go coming off of the Olympics? Did, were you excited about ISL? Were you excited about competing that much that soon? Yeah, I know. I mean, obviously everyone's wired differently and, um, you know, staring down the barrel of, of a four week, two, four week, I guess, camps is, is a lot for people who just left for a month, you know? Um, I mean, like it, it's, yeah, I can understand why why a lot of people would want to take a break. Um, and I I took like a little bit of time out of the water, but I knew that if I wanted to be good in ISL, then I'd have to get back into it pretty quick. Um, so I, I did, and um, you know, it's what it's that that saying of of objects in motion stay in motion when objects at rest stay at rest. And I I told myself that if I just kept going, I could keep going. So. Um, you know, I, it was, I knew, you know, it was great money-making opportunity, great, you know, training experience and, and, you know, every time it felt like too much, um, it all just kind of worked out and, and, you know, the coaches were really flexible and, and, you know, the coaches here, the coaches on Cali Condors and, and everything, it just, you know, they, they understood that, you know, swimming wasn't the only priority in my life anymore. And, and for the first time in five years, it, it you know, it wasn't. And I was able to, you know, tell them, Hey, like I have homework, I'm not going to this practice or, you know, I have a test I'm studying for. So, you know, I need to change my schedule this way or that way. And, and it all seemed to work out. So, um, I think, you know, knowing that it was, it was going to work out definitely helps motivate me to keep going. And, you know, December 22nd, which was the end of Abu Dhabi was circled on my calendar for sure. But, um, you know, I think, I, I don't think I was particularly burned out from, you know, the five year cycle. Um, I know, I know a lot of people, you know, struggle with that, especially in, in the post post Olympic, you know, years is that that fall semester is really hard. O- October, November can, can be really hard to, you know, uh, kind of find yourself and, you know, what am I doing? Why am I training? You know, I don't enjoy this anymore. Yada, yada, you know, it, 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 I mean, et cetera, but it, it, um, you know, it, it never really hit me. And I think it's cause I stayed so busy that I, I really didn't have time to process, you know, what was happening and, and, you know, the, the grand scheme of things when I was worried about turning in a homework assignment and, you know, trying to get, you know, more than five hours of sleep so I can be up for practice in the morning and stuff like that. So, uh, it, yeah, it's definitely the motto of, of, the fall was, was objects in motion tend to stay in motion. So I was, I was just keep it, keep on rolling. (laughs) (laughs) So, uh, yeah, again, I'm curious why you decided grad school, um, especially as you said, you'd been out of school for five years. Um, so why was, why was, you know, after the Olympics, the right time to start this master's degree in electrical engineering for you? Yeah, it, um, it, it made sense to me because, uh, like, like I said before, I hadn't taken a class in five years and, um, you know, some people are, are good at keeping up with that stuff. And I, I hadn't really looked at much of it, um, since, and, you know, something, something I enjoyed studying in undergrad, I enjoyed the challenge of it. And, um, I think I really, you know, enjoyed the work ethic that I, I needed to put into it to, to, you know, have sufficient grades and stuff like that. So, um, I, I enjoyed studying it and, and, and the grind that came along with that, you know, kind of like swimming in a, in a way, but, um, it made sense at least for, for, you know, in the grand scheme of things that I, I really wanted to dedicate myself to the sport of swimming for, for a while and, and, you know, really try to, you know, squeeze as much out of it as I could. 
and and focus on that because you know you, you can't swim forever and and life you know life calls eventually so um you know that was a good four-year plan but turned out five-year plan where where i could just focus on that and, and do that and you know i was you know, support, supported by, you know, friends, family, coaches, and everyone, you know, I was lucky enough to be in a situation where I could do that. Um, and then after the games, uh, it, it, it made sense that, you know, I, I think a lot of people, um, you know, not necessarily grow bored with sport, but, you know, look for new challenges and, and look for new, new things. And, um, you know, I think going back to school was, was a way to mark off, you know, that box and also check the box of what am I going to do after my swimming career? You know, it's, I'm not saying, you know, it's over. I don't, I don't know when it's going to be over. Um, but you know, it'll be, it'll be good to kind of revisit all the stuff I studied in school and, you know, especially cause it's something that I, I don't know what I particularly want to do in electrical engineering, but I know that, you know, a degree from George tech will help me figure that out. So I, um, I, you know, I, it made sense to me and, and it made sense, um, you know, in, in this particular time, it's, it's a year and a half program. So, you know, the first year and a half of, of, you know, is yeah, this, this year and a half is going to fly by. And after that, I'll, you know, I don't know if I'll be swimming or if I'll be ready to go, you know, be in the workforce or, you know, like I said, life, life comes at you fast. And, um, I'm just, I'm just going to be ready for, for whatever's next. Yeah. Uh, so then managing the fall, you know, you said when things would get kind of too, too stressful or things would get to be a lot, it it all kind of worked out. Um, did you have any devices that you were using just on a day-to-day basis of, uh, of, of how to manage everything, right. Of, of if things got too a little too overwhelming or, or you were feeling pressure or, tired or, you know, how are you managing all that? Yeah. Um, is, uh, I don't, I don't particularly know how I did it, but, <laughs> um, it's just like looking forward to, to the little things, I guess. Um, just because, you know, weeks can be so crazy that, that, you know, uh, you know, one week, I guess I'll have a big assignment, whatever, all the homeworks are due by Thursday. So Friday, you know, is, is pretty relaxed and yeah, I'll have a practice and a lift or whatever, but you know, Friday afternoon, you know, I'll be able to, um, you know, hang out with Mel or, or we can go, well, I, I mean, I guess we can't go hang out with friends, but, um, you know, for, for a while we could go hang out with friends and then, um, uh, all that stuff, but it's just like looking forward to those moments and, and, you know, knowing that you'd have, you know, three or four days of, of really hard work or, you know, five or six days of hard work, but then you're like, okay, like on on Saturday night, you know, we can sit down and just watch, you know, watch a movie that we've been wanting to see and, and order out. And, and, you know, those nights are, are really great. And, you know, it kind of, it brings me back to when I was full-time swimming cause we could just do that all the time. But um, yeah, it, it's just those like, just make it to Friday this week or just make it to Saturday this week and, and then you'll figure it out from there. So it was, I guess little baby steps is how, how I managed to get through that because um, because yeah, it, it was a lot at, at, at many points in this semester, but, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems like you, you managed it well. And then, uh, you moved to Atlanta, you started school at Georgia tech and then you started training with Georgia tech as well, obviously because of proximity. Um, so mm-hmm. can you tell me a little bit about that and w- what the training has been like and maybe how it's differed from, uh, you know, training with, with Jack and the crew at Georgia. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little different for sure. Um, it's, uh, it's different. It's different in a way that, that before when, you know, I, I wouldn't miss practice. I wouldn't miss anything. I'd, I'd be super rigid in in my schedule. And and now it's, you know, now I'm super, you know, Mike is great (laughs) when dealing with my flexibility because, I, I think he knows, you know, the, the, you know, rigors of, of studying at Georgia Tech as well. And cause he's got a lot of those undergraduates that are, you know, people on the team that are, that are studying that too. And, um, you know, I think he's, he's also knowing that, that anytime that, you know, 520 alarm goes off, I may just turn it off and not come in. And that might be the last time he sees me in the pool. So, you know, it's like one of those things where he's like, okay, like, 
we'll we'll take care of you. We'll work you when we need to work you. But also, you know, if you're feeling like it's a lot or whatever, you need to take prex off. It's totally fine. So in in, in that sense, it's it's a little different. Um, but uh, training wise, I think he's definitely a little more um, technical oriented. Maybe a little more power oriented. We're working on video a lot more than I used to. We're doing a lot more. Um, like focus drilling, I guess you could say where we kind of just do uh, build up like to certain things and, and really focusing on one thing in particular. Um, and yeah, you get, you, you get more rest, but things need to be, you know, <laughs> more sharper, like at, you know, 25 all out or, you know, 50 all out. And you just need to be, um, you know, faster at that as opposed to, you know, doing, um, I don't know, hundred fifties on a short interval with, you know, it's just different in that way that it's, it's a little more shorter, a little more focused. And I think, um, I think for, for where I am mentally, especially after, you know, a five year cycle where I was trying to be, you know, in, in better shape than, than all of my competitors, I was trying to be faster and, and stronger than all my competitors. Now I just, I kind of wanted to do the best that I could do in this scenario. I, I knew I wasn't training as much as maybe other people, but I was just going to, get as much out of it as I could. And I think Mike's really helps, helps with that. And, you know, I don't have to go into practice knowing that I'm going to do, you know, uh, eight, you know, 16, 200. you know, it's, it's something like that where, you know, I'm not saying that that was totally necessary. And, you know, I'm not saying anything about the coaching, coaching in you know, Georgia, cause obviously that's, you know, a huge part of, of my past and, and, you know, I owe, you know, everything in the past cycle to them, but, um, it's just different. And I think it works, works more for, for where I am mentally now that, um, now that it's like, you know, again, a post Olympic year and, um, you know, I have differing, differing priorities this time around. And, um, yeah, he's been, he's been super great and, and it's been fun kind of, kind of seeing a different way of training just cause, you know, I had been in Athens for, I was at 10, nine, 10 years, something like that. So, um, now I've been to training camps and stuff, but, but this is definitely something that I haven't really done much of, of being in a, a sprint group. And, um, it's been, it's been, you know, pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those, those pieces definitely seem to fit together when like, like you said, you're kind of, you're in a different place mentally, you're doing other things outside of the pool. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that sounds really cool. And, um, I, I always like just hearing about different training styles or what people are doing differently. Um, so it's, but the thing I'm most impressed with was, was your taper season, right? That's, that's what <laughs> we all saw. That's, that's, uh, in, uh, in the ISL final, obviously the Cali Condors were just edged out by energy standard, but you had the hot hand at that meet. Uh, huh. did you win all three breaststrokes at that meet? I did. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then, and then you go to worlds, you get six medals, uh, three gold, including the 50 and the 200, um, and then, and then individual bronze in the hundred as well. Um, can you take me through those two meets and just what, how, first of all, how you were tapering, you know, coming from the, the more sprint oriented training and then, um, just your experience of those two meets that were, you know, two, three weeks apart. Yeah. Um, it was, it was, an interesting, you know, I guess taper season, you could say, just because um, we hadn't really, it, it's not really much of a plan that you can make when you're swimming every weekend. So you want to, you know, you're swimming every weekend, but you're starting in, was it mid, mid uh, or early November, I guess. But you want to be, you know, you want to peak maybe at, you know, and early December, end of December, whatever, but you want to be sharp at every weekend for, you know, that entire time. So, you know, you race every weekend. And, and so you had to do a mixture of, well, like you need to stay in shape because you need to be able to finish, you know, a couple of two hundreds and, you know, at, at short course worlds, I knew I was going to have the gauntlet when it comes to, you know, potentially being on relays. Cause there's just so many relays at that meet and we, you know, we don't bring a full roster. So who knows? And, um, I was swimming all three breaststrokes and, you know, that's a lot of swimming and, um, the, I am uh, the hundred I am as well. So I knew I had to keep, you know, my yardage up and endurance up to a degree, but also, you know, 
by the end of the week, I needed to swim fast. So I kind of had this little like mini cycle, I guess, where I would just do that is just um, get yards in the front end of the week and then kind of sharpen things up by the end of the week and then race and then rinse and repeat. Um, and I was actually pretty nervous going from the last, um, the last, I guess, semifinal meet into the final meet because it was the same time I had been going all semifinals and I'm like, I don't know what's happening. Like I should be getting faster and, you know, I'm further removed from travel and all that stuff. And, you know, Mike was calling me like, don't worry, like you're good. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I wasn't like that worried, but I was like kind of like confused as to what was happening. I just assumed it would be getting better as, as it kind of went on. And um, especially that, you know, the finals I think was closer um, to our last match than all the other matches were. So I think I had, you know, four days or something. I'm like, okay, well, you know, hypothetically I'm going 56 two, you know, what, what can I really do in four days? Or, you know, I'm going 204. What, what can I really do in four days? And, um, you know, I guess more so like, you know, trust the process, trust, you know, your coaches that you'll take care of you. And, you know, I think, I think, you know, having all the experience of, you know, being 28 and having been through not this particular, you know, this particular set of meets, but I've been able to kind of, um, you know, know what I need and, and kind of go by feel. And, um, I was, you know, I think as surprised as anybody else to see those results, cause I was expecting, you know, maybe to go some best times in, in Abu Dhabi and, and kind of, you know, do really well at, at ISL final. But, um, but I, I wasn't really expecting to, you know, really go best times in, in the hundred and the 50 and then, um, you know, match my best time in the 200, uh, so that was definitely a surprise and, um, it involved a lot of just, uh, I guess, self-care at, towards the end and, uh, not doing too much in the weight room, but, um, I guess just keeping faith in the process, especially earlier on when I wasn't, you know, I wasn't winning many races, actually, I think in the, the second semifinal meet, I think a total of like six or seven breaststrokers beat me across all three, you know, the 50, 100 and 200. So it was, it was something like that where, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm a pretty good all around breaststroker, but that was just a lot of people who were getting their hand on the wall first. And, um, you know, it was, it was definitely cool to see at the end when, when Callie was kind of, um, you know, knew we had a shot going into it and the breaststrokes were just written off for, um, you know, many points for energy standard. It was, it was kind of fun to kind of, you know, have Kevin there and, and we kind of flipped the script on that and, and scored, scored a lot of points and, and, you know, that, that was a lot of fun for sure. Um, yeah, it is tough that, that, uh, there was, you know, that one crazy DQ, but, um, we, we were pretty close to, to an ISL final and, and that would have been, that would have been fun to go back to back, but, uh, you know, energy had to, you know, do energy things. So it's, <laughs> it is what it is, but, uh, you know, and that was, that was good, but, um, yeah. And then after that, it was, it was really just, it was really focusing on finals week in school, um, kind of coming back and, and, you know, flushing out the travel, but then also, you know, again, you you have to maintain for, for another, you know, two or three weeks. And, um, all the while you're, you know, studying for final exams that uh, at least in one class that was deciding whether or not I was going to pass. So <laughs> there was, there was, uh, some definitely some, some high, uh, high stakes attached to those finals at the end, but, um, you know, they all ended up turning out okay, but, uh, I didn't know that, I guess, going into, <laughs> going into, uh, even Abu Dhabi, but, um, yeah, it was, it was really all about just kind of, you know, keep, keep going through the process and, you know, doing what your coach tells you and then also, you know, trying to do well in school, finish up that semester and then um, fly to Abu Dhabi where, you know, you kind of go through the same thing where I think I had one more assignment I had to finish while I was out there. Um, it was like, it was done before the meet started. So, which was, which was nice. Uh, <laughs> Cause then, cause then after that, I was, it was kind of, you know, back to the old grind of, of only having swimming for at least a few days. So it was, it was good that it worked out in that sense, but um, yeah. And, and, you know, by the time I left for Abu Dhabi, there was no, there was not, no more training really. It was just get there and take care of yourself and, and whatever you need to do to some fast, you know, the next day or the day after the day after whatever. So um, it was kind of just uh, kind of just, you know, a little bit of 
a little bit of trust the process, a little bit of make it up as you go, just because it was such an unprecedented, um, you know, schedule for me. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy that it all worked out and, you know, it definitely worked out way better than I was anticipating it. Um, you know, especially in Abu Dhabi to, you know, help team USA, you know, rack up the medals was, was a lot of fun and a situation I had not been in in the past where, you know, I've, I've had some good meets before, but, but nothing quite like that. So it was, it was really fun to be, to be involved that much. And, and for, you know, USA swimming to, to be swimming well under those circumstances, um, you know, especially cause the short course worlds after Olympics, you know, usually gets a lot of, a lot of chatter about, about that stuff. So it was good to, good to, you know, success, have success out there. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> like you said, this was, uh, this was kind of a first for you in terms of just having had being a world champion, you know, having, get, getting a world title, uh, did, did that, you know, hold any significance besides just kind of being like, man, that, that feels cool. Yeah. I mean, uh, it was, it, it's, it is kind of funny because, um, every time I feel like I, you know, my, every time I think that my better event is transitioning from the 200 to the hundred, like I'll throw down a really good hundred time and I'm like, Oh, like, this is it. Like I'm finally a hundred. I'm finally a sprinter. I'll like go and do better in the 200. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's like so weird. Cause you know, or I'll like have more success than that. And so it was, it was funny that, you know, um, especially after having such a good hundred at, at ISL, um, to see that, you know, I ended up having a better placing in the 200, uh, is funny, but yeah, stepping up on, on that metal podium. I mean, it was, it was definitely something that, that I, I will not forget. Um, you know, being, being a world champion in, in that res- respect was, was, is, is something I think I can <laughs> definitely be proud of. And, you know, there's, there's that, you know, competition aholic in you that wants more. It always wants more. And, and no matter what you do, it's never satisfied. But I was, I was definitely happy with that. And, and, you know, there was, you know, not much more I could have asked for myself in, in that scenario. And then, I mean, the 50 was, was exciting. You know, it, it, the 200 was, you know, more of a, more of a relief and, you know, an emotional kind of thing. But I think the, the 50 was more unexpected perhaps. And, um, therefore more, more exciting in that regard. Uh, so, you know, and, and, uh, the relay was really cool too. Um, especially cause a lot of times I'll, you know, go to meets or whatever and, and, you know, have to watch the medley relay, but it was, it was really fun to be a part of it and, um, and to, you know, help, help team USA in a couple of medley relays actually. So it was, it was good to kind of get, get a bunch of action in, in that. So yeah, definitely, definitely a special moment. And, you know, for, for a person whose standards are are crazy, crazy high, just because, you know, it's the the competitor in me, but yeah, definitely a special moment. Yeah. And and so now, uh, I'm guessing you might've had a little time to reflect on the fall. Um, I'm kind of curious as like, I don't, you know, I'm obviously not going to ask you your GPA or anything, but I'm kind of (laughs) curious how you felt about how the academic semester went for you, you know, and, and then what are you thinking just moving forward? Yeah, it's so the the degree I'm in is um, it's a year and a half and then it's 30 credits. So, um, yeah, this might be too, mi- too much specifics, but essentially it's four classes and then three classes and then three classes. Right. So I was taking four classes the last semester. Right. Which is oh, wow. for, you know, graduate level electrical engineering courses. It was a lot. Um, but another reason that that you know that it did keep me going was if I dropped a course or you know whatever if I didn't want to finish it out then then I'd have to take another course at some point and what a really good motivating factor was only having three courses for this semester and next semester so I was like no like rip it off like a band-aid get it over with like it's going to be so much better next semester when you only have three courses so um I haven't, you know, put that to the test quite yet because we just started this week for the second semester, but you know, I'm hoping that it's going to be a lot, a lot more manageable than it was. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, it was, it was a lot of work. I, there weren't many 
afternoons, you know, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday that I had off to, you know, not do schoolwork. So um, it was definitely, definitely a 180 from, from what I had been doing the past five years of just not, you know, doing any sort of school. Um, and um, yeah, I actually, the, um, the grades ended up turning out okay, which is, which was surprising to me. Um, <laughs> at the end, my parents were like, oh, you're the you know boy who cried wolf because you were saying that you're not going to do well. And then it ended up being fine. And I was like, you guys don't get it. Like I was, I was, I'm, I thought I had a pretty good sense of where I was, and then you know pleasantly surprised at the end. But I was like, these, I was in danger in one class for sure, <laughs> like for sure danger. But. Um, I ended up passing, which is good. And, uh, that's all that really matters. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a crazy semester academics wise, but I, I'm also thinking again that I, you know, hadn't taken a class in so long that it's a pretty steep learning curve. And I've hopefully climbed most of that going into this next semester that, um, you know, all the stuff that I'll have to relearn was, you know, stuff that I had to relearn last semester. So, um, I'm anticipating it being a little, a little bit less work, but I don't want to get my hopes up too, too much yet. <laughs> so what are you going to do now that you won't have, you know, uh, a month of training and competing while also balancing four classes? I mean, you're going to have so much free time. You only have three classes. You don't, you don't have that many meets. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, especially, I mean, I don't know if I'll have a meet till, you know, March. So um, I, I have, you know, plenty of time to, to kind of relax in the same time zone for a while, which will be, which will be nice. Um, you know, even if I want to like, I think go, you know, do a training trip or something, I can do that. I mean, especially when, you know, their conference meet and, and NCAA is rolls around, I, I should be able to kind of be free to kind of do whatever I want. And, you know, I'm like, Oh my God, I'll have to be away from school for a week. But I'm like, wait, I was just away for eight weeks in the fall. So like, this should totally be fine and, and it will work out. So um, I am looking forward to, you know, ideally having some more time, but, um, but if it is a lot of work that I know, I know I'm prepared at least, uh, you know, mentally to attempt to go through it again. I don't know if I'll be able to finish the semester, but it would be, it, it'd be fine. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, Nick, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to sit down and, and debrief these last few months for you. Um, is there any parting thoughts you want to share with our audience before we sign off today? Uh, no, I don't think so. Um, that was, that was pretty much summarizing the past six months of my life. So, <laughs> well, awesome. Yeah. Again, Nick, I, I appreciate you taking the time and it was great having you. Yeah, of course. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.